Good afternoon, everybody. I am running late, so sorry. I was actually going to get my iced coffee, which I made yesterday. That's the real secret to iced coffee. Make it the day before and let it sit in your fridge. It's really cold. It's perfect. So before we get into the patterns, I want to show you a couple things I did this week. Like this. Um, I bought this off Timu. I got to be honest. It doesn't really fit conventional sewing. Good afternoon, Olivia. It doesn't fit conventional sewing thread spools. Um, it fits these because they're so large. And then I have a couple over here that it fit only because this is the kind of spool that has, I'm hanging it off here, not here. Uh, it wasn't super expensive, but the thing that bothered me is the photos they showed online. And get, I keep in mind, it's I know it's Timu, it's from China, whatever. Um, when they showed it online, they actually showed it with thread on it. And then they had another one that had like sunglasses and jewelry, whatever. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I think if you're going to spend the money, just go get one of these from Joann's. The reason I got it is because, take this down, Barbie, um, was this, which of course it's not going to do. Me. Yep. Whoop. That's why I got it. Okay. Um, you can see, see, I do have some thread on it. This ended up being the thread I could fit, which the good thing about this, I was able to empty this all out of my sewing case, uh, not sewing case, my sewing cabinet that I have my old singer in. And um, I was able to put patterns in there. I'm trying really hard to organize my sewing room, but I'm, I'm at the stage where, and I'm sure a lot of you can appreciate this, where you're organizing. So it's so much worse then before you started to organize, yeah, I'm at that stage. I'm going to put this on the floor for now. Okay. Now, the other thing, I talked about this. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer so you guys can see it. Um, these were the silver buttons, right? There weren't enough. And I did the tree, but I don't really love it. So I'm not going to do this. I'm going to... Use this instead because it is cushioning. I'm going to use this instead for the buttons on card. I'm going to do another buttons on cards uh, display, but I am going to show you a couple of the sets I had that gave me the idea of doing this because they're so lovely. They're almost like jewelry. So here's one. There's two of these. I mean, they really look like a large earring. I mean, they're beautiful, but they look like a large earring. This one here, same thing. Yeah, they're gorgeous, aren't they? It's almost like it's surprising that these were ever buttons, but really pretty. This is interesting. This is just cut so that it looks faceted. It doesn't actually have little diamonds in it. And then I had this set here. Whoop. Sorry, these are really tiny. Again, with the rhinestones. These may all actually be turned into earrings at some point in time because I feel like they're kind of a waste because there's only two of them. There's no, they're so hard to pick up, these little ones. But so pretty, right? So they might end up being earrings. The rest of them were kind of... They're okay, but, you know, I think... Like I just said, I, we're going to go back to the buttons on cards, that collage, because I really like that a lot. So I did a lot of Facebook Marketplace this week. And if you look right here at this loveliness, I already had this one. I had gotten it, I think when I wasn't doing YouTube, it was, uh, I went and picked up patterns and they had this and I bought it. And it was a pretty good deal. I don't think it was super expensive. I think with the patterns and that, it was like $30. I saw a woman advertising this for 25 bucks plus everything in it. No patterns, 
lots of notions, buttons, gorgeous stuff, but I'll show you why I grabbed it. I could see in the pictures that this lid had no cracks. I have three of these. I have one that's clear. I have one that's not an avocado green. It's like a, I don't know. I, I would call it more of a minty green. And I have one that's pink on the bottom. And all of them, this part up here is cracked because that's always cracked. This is not cracked. And when I saw it in the picture, I had a feeling it was the matching one to this. And when I got them home, they do indeed. They are the matching. <clears throat> they are the matching set. <clears throat> So I will be selling those at some point in time because I don't need four of them. And yeah, they're a nice little, there'll be a nice little bit of cash. Let's move, let's move the Barbie sewing machine. It's not actually Barbie. It's just a child sewing machine, but it's so cute. So let me put these aside. So the other thing that I did this week was a woman was selling this on Facebook Marketplace. But it wasn't just this. She was also selling a bunch of notions that went with it. And I realize you guys, I don't think I have any link to Instagram, but I had taken a picture of the buttons. And by the, I'll show you what's inside here. So it is vintage sewing machine attachments. And I'm going to sell this also. She was selling this for five bucks, which was way too cheap. So I also bought some fabric with her. It's really nothing to write home about. Oh, you have the pink one, Olivia? Yeah, they all crack. That top plastic piece, they all crack. So to find one that wasn't cracked was insane. That's why I'm going to sell it. Um, anyway, so this woman was selling this for five bucks. And then I bought some fabric from her. It's nothing to write home about. It's modern, it's modern fabric. When I saw it in the pictures, I didn't realize that it wasn't apparel. It's actually... Um, well, the one piece she told me was Sunbrella after I bought it. So whatever. I bought the fabric from her. It's outdoor fabric. It's nothing to write home about. Another woman had another Facebook. Now, so this is the this is the third woman. So I bought the attachments from one woman. I bought the box from another woman, which, by the way, was loaded with thread. So I need another thread thing just for the thread I got from this other woman. And then this third woman had very good scissors and I could see them. She wanted 10 bucks for everything. And in it, I could see these very good scissors. And the funny thing is I got them home. I took a piece of fabric and just sliced through with the, the scissors are so sharp. They're in such good shape, but they were really good. But in her haul, she had fabulous buttons. I put these buttons up on Instagram. I took a picture of the group of them and I wrote... <laughs> When when did buttons get boring? Or I think or why did why did buttons become boring? Something like that. And everybody commented on it because look at these buttons. Right? Like, come on. How cool are those? I don't even know how old these are. These have a barcode on them. So these are at least 1980s, because that's when barcodes come in. Maybe even now nah, there's no date, but I mean these could have even been late 90s, right? And then there were these. These are look how beautiful they are. You know, like, and even these, these are just some basic pearl buttons. There was another set of these. I really liked these. These were, um, I don't, it's not picking it up, but it's kind of, they're kind of bluer than the other ones. And then these, these are vintage. There's no barcode, just beautiful red buttons. And if you look at them closely, they have a little white line around them. These, another beautiful set of buttons. This is raised. It's it's some type of fake metal on a black button. And then these, look at these. It's a cameo, right? I mean, when did buttons become so boring? So these will be these will be front and center on the new button collage board, definitely. Absolutely front and center. It's over here. Put these over here. And in other news, I've decided to create a little cat collage as a um, an homage to Mrs. Landis. Now that I know her real name, Mildred, this is a piece of paper I found. And this was funny. This was another little like envelope, but I love the look of this. 
So I'm somehow going to like collage them together. I'm just going to do it in a picture frame. I'll show it to you guys when I get it done. All right. So this week, let me move you guys a tad bit closer. This week, I worked on the Vogue patterns that I picked up at Goodwill. It's two weeks ago now. I need some coffee today. It's, I'm having a tough day. Just had a problem waking up this morning. You know, it's Sunday, so it's not a big deal. But you know that feeling where you're just like, oh, I just can't wake up. Anyway, so I went through and I organized all the patterns. There are a good amount of Vogue. I was very happy with that because I don't have a lot of Vogue. There are, are lots of Berta. Next week I'll be doing Berta and possibly... Um, I'll definitely be doing Berta and New Look and possibly be showing you Butterix if I can get through the Butterix because there were also, there were quite a lot of Butterix. And then there were a fair amount of simplicity, but there are a ton of McCalls. More McCalls than I originally thought they were. I have a little problem with the McCalls right now. I'm already running out of space in the, <laughs> the cabinet that I got. The I got a filing cabinet that used to be my boss's office. They were getting rid of it for them calls. It's, I, I already filled it. So now I'm like, what am I going to do? Like I need to have a sale on McCall's to make room for more McCall's. So I'm going to do the McCall's last because I feel like I don't have any room for them. So I'm going to have to do them last. So anyway, let's start with these, with these style. Sorry about the glare from the plastic. These, I have a couple of these. They're such big patterns that I had to when I was going through the envelope, I didn't want to put them back in because they were going to break the envelope. So this is just really lovely style. Um, if that dress looks familiar, right? Actually, this one, not so much. There's another one in here. This dress looks very familiar because it is extremely similar to Diana's dress right here. This is kind of what Diana's dress, wedding dress looked like. This is a little bit later. I think this was 1988. So it's well after she had been married, but this really looked like her wedding dress. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Then we had this dress, just a really basic, this almost is a pioneer style dress. If you really look at it, um, the way it, first of all, the length, look at the length on it. But I remember when these were popular, this is from 1990. I remember when these were popular in the 1990s because, you know, raise your hand if you had granny boots. I did. I had little black granny boots. Uh, they were a thing back in the day. Actually, I miss them. They were super, they were possibly one of the most comfortable pairs of shoes I ever had. They laced up. They went above my ankle. They were black. They had kind of a short heel on them. And I really liked them. They were super comfortable. <laughs> this pattern... I originally listed I listed it as a boat neck boat neck line suit pattern, but the more I looked at it, the more I realized I think this is what is honestly called a portrait collar. So you know, let me know in the comments if you think it's a you know portrait collar. But you know, oh my Instagram handle is cheap hussy. So yeah. Oh, you already follow me? Okay. Um, yeah, so you'll see the picture of the buttons and I had just put the question, you know, what, when did buttons become boring or why did buttons become boring? Something like that. Okay. So let's briefly talk about another YouTuber. So Stephanie Canada, who we all love, right? She got like three boxes of patterns from a viewer. Really nice. It seems to be a trend, right? And so she was going through them and it's kind of funny. I was watching the video just a little while ago. And um, it's funny because she has this rule. She only keeps one pattern per box. So this woman actually took um, three patterns that were her bust size and put them in individual boxes so she could keep three patterns, which I thought was really sweet. Uh, anyway, when she's doing the unboxing, she found, she found some mouse damage. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk about mouse damage. I'm going to show you. You guys never see any of the stuff that's mouse damaged that I get unless they didn't pee on it because I just throw it away. 
In fact, I had to throw away patterns today, broke my heart. They weren't mouse damaged but they were, oh, Bob the Mouse, you watched it. Yeah, Bob the Mouse. It's it's a very funny video because she's she's really between a rock and a hard place because she's finding too many patterns she wants to keep. So it's really fun to watch, but she's got some great patterns too. So I had to throw them away already. Um, they were not peed on by mice, but you will see a lot of these Vogues. I'm not going to say they got totally wet. I think they got dripped on. And I think what happened is they ended up in a box in a basement and there was a pipe and the pipe was dripping because it's rusty water. And I will not sell anything that mice have gotten on. I won't sell things that are moldy. Um, mildew is one thing because as soon as I hit it with a hot iron, the mildew is going to, it's going to be killed. And basically what I do sell, it's called foxing and you'll see it a lot. It's like little dots from the mildew and it's already dead by the time it's, you see it. I mean, they don't smell like, Mrs. Landis, or Mrs. Landis's patterns, I have been ironing them, not because they're really, really damaged, but the ironing helps to get rid of that smell. But even that basement smell that they have is not as bad as mildew. I've had patterns in the past that had mildew and I had to throw them away. But I did find this. This is not a bob pattern, but you can see somebody done chewed this pattern up. There's no urine on it. <clears throat> the thing about the mouse urine, urine is it is bright yellow and you can smell it immediately when you pull the pattern out, even if it's dried out. And they tend to be sticky, which is really gross. Like I've touched patterns and they still feel sticky. It's bright yellow. It smells it smells sweet actually. So they just go in the trash. You guys never see them. But now this could be insect damage, but it's not because it's, these are teeth bites. So not sure what I'm gonna do with this pattern. The pattern itself seems to be fine. But he did a job on the envelope and he did a job on the directions. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. So this one may be put aside. Like I said, I did have to throw away two patterns. You know, that breaks my heart. It's very hard for me to throw away patterns, but I did. I threw away some patterns today. All right. So she had a couple of several of these easy patterns. See, and this here. Like this isn't even mildew. This is rubbing from patterns being rubbed together for way too long. There was this, this outfit, which I'm absolutely sure I had in the 90s. I really think I had both the shirt and the skirt. Um, maybe not these exact fabrics, but something relatively close. And this super cute pattern. Patterns falling over. There's a lot of patterns. It's going to take us a long time today, but we'll, we'll do our best. Um, this absolutely lovely. Some of these are up online. In fact, this next series of four or five, I think all of them are up online already. Love this. You can see it's a wrap in the two lengths. Yeah, I love the pirate shirts too. I gotta say, Olivia, I'm with you. I liked, <clears throat> I liked the whole pirate look. And here's a whole series from Vogue that I don't remember. So this is a one piece dress with the cardigan. It does look like a two piece dress, but if you look at the line drawings, it's actually one dress with the cardigan. But very nice. A little too um, conservative for my taste. You know, in the in the 90s, I wasn't very conservative. I was into grunge. I was. Yeah, not exactly a confession. I'm going to move you guys ever so slightly so that I don't knock over my iced coffee. Speaking of grunge, let's have some more coffee. Mmm. All right. Another really nice... 80s kind of mock wrap. We did a lot of mock wrap in the 80s and 90s, didn't we? This was another one. Can you see that? It's Vogue Sport. I know that I have another pattern by this, but it is for outerwear. So I'm really questioning why this is called Vogue Sport. I mean, this is a dress. There's nothing sporty per se about this. Very cottagecore though. 
it's very much, yeah, it'll sell quick. The cottage core, core girls will go for that one. All right, so here's a classics. And was this Ralph Lauren? No, but I looked at this and I swear Ralph Lauren had something really similar to this. And if you look at it, Dutch, this totally looks like Ralph Lauren. It really does. Oh, more mock. Here we go. Another kind of tulip skirt. And these here, shorts. Another Vogue Classics. Again, a little conservative for me, but very nice. This this particular um, haul of patterns, very heavy on the 90s, which is fine. I mean, I have a lot of 90s, but that's okay because let's face it, a couple more years, the 90s are going to be, yeah, I know. I don't even want to think about it. It already hurts me when people say turn of the century and I'm like, stop saying that. Stop saying turn of the century. Okay. <laughs> like, I just, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> stop saying it. By the way, there's a lot of the um, large format though. They're all kind of sitting over here. We'll be getting to those in a minute. Another, another like mock wrap kind of thing. Not really a wrap, wrap dress. Ooh. Oh, yeah, these. So some of these, some of these got wetter than others. Um, so yeah. In fact, I think we already saw this dress. These were the ones. So I just had to kind of look at them. And just go through them and see what kind of condition they were in. Um, you know, like you can see this. It's rusty, but then the, I'll show you the pattern. That's the pattern. The pattern's fine. That's why I don't think these got fully submerged. I think they got dripped on, which is sad, but I get it. Uh, this, this haul was another haul where I feel that the person may have owned some type of a shop because just so many, so many of the set, like this one, I know there's another one of this one in there. I think there's four of these, all different sizes. Nobody's buying this, this dress in four sizes, unless you had a shop. So that's why I think that she had a shop. And unfortunately, this is, this is actually a great suit, isn't it? Yeah. Even though this is the nineties, this is a killer suit. Um, I have a feeling what happened was she got sick, she passed away, whatever. The kids took her patterns from her shop, put them in boxes, and stuck them in a basement. It's also possible that she did it. You know, maybe they closed the shop, you know, late 90s, because most of these, none of these really go too far past 1995. You know, maybe, just maybe, she closed the shop in the late nineties and she put everything into boxes and stuck them in her basement and she had a pipe that leaked. Oh, this next one. Okay. I'm sorry. I've seen Vogue woman before, but this particular outfit to me, I'm not kidding. I'm really sure Barbara Bush had this outfit. It really, to me, looks like something that Barbara Bush wore once. And then this, this was almost ubiquitous. The only thing this doesn't have is, um, remember when we all went through, yeah, let's set our way back machine. Remember when everybody had the blazer and it had like a fake patch from like a fake family, it was like a fake family crest, right? There was one by Ralph Lauren from Polo. There was, I, everybody had one, right? I mean, you could go to Macy's and Macy's brand had a jacket like this and on the the chest, the breast pocket would be some fake emblem from a fake family. <laughs> this is so cool. It looks like a dress. It's not. It's actually a two-piece dress. And you know me. I love a two-piece dress. Oh, this next pattern. Oh, I wanted to keep this pattern. I'm still on the fence about keeping this pattern. Okay. 
It's so cool. And all that wrap stuff you see going on on the front is a secondary piece. So, yeah, I might, I might put that over there. We're, I'm going to think about that. We'll see. That might be the one I keep from this. I don't know. I haven't gone through the rest of it. Love this, too. This is also a two-piece. So this is a two-piece shirt dress which is always a great thing to have. And it even includes the camisole pattern if you want to do a more transparent fabric. This was also one that I was very tempted by, but it's only 16, so I'm not going to keep it. It's not my size. This, which is so fierce. It's just, look how fierce that is. It's so fierce. And it's two pieces, the shrug and the dress. This next pattern, as soon as I saw it, I immediately thought, of Dorothy from the Golden Girls, right? But it's great. It's totally Dorothy from the Golden Girls. Oh, and this, yeah, this has got to be from the 80s because this was everywhere. Includes the super, super, like, um, oversized shirt that goes with it. You know, and here's the sad thing. This is going to sell, this is going to sell so fast. Like, it will sell the fastest out of everything. And then there's stuff like this, which I think is gorgeous, but this probably won't sell as fast. It might. I mean, it's awesome. It's also very fierce. That's That was the thing with Vogue. Vogue patterns were pretty much all fierce, you know. There we go. The suit. The shorts suit with a long jacket, which was a weird look when I look at it now. It's a weird look. The proportions on these were weird, but raise your hand if you had one. Cause I had one, I had a black one and it had, it came with a shell that was like, um, like a really pearly, like seashell kind of pink. Yeah. Olivia, you agree. Mm -hmm, right. So pretty. This is such a lovely, like mother of the bride type suit. I think I'm going to end up putting this one under the formal wear. Oh, I love this one too. This was another one went up to my size. It's, I had to take it out. It was starting to kill the binding. Um, very late thirties, early forties kind of style. Oh, this is considered a very easy Vogue. I don't know. This one's pretty cool too. Oh, this one's nice too. It's quite a nice shirt dress. What, we may have to put this one aside too. You know, I know I'm eating into my inventory, but oh, here's another one that the mouse may or may have not gotten. <laughs> And again, the pattern's fine. I'll show you guys. This one, he didn't even get the directions. The pattern's fine, but he did. Um, this might be insect damage. The insects, they take much smaller little bites. Like I, and, and yeah, this is insect because of this right there. So this is insect activity. The other one was mouse activity. Oh, nice, huh? Just a really nice dress. This one we already saw. And we'll go through that one again. There's this one. Of course, some of these that have damaged, that's my fault because, you know, Goodwill puts the stupid tag on the top. This one we also already saw. We have this. Very Star Trek. I feel like, I feel like it's the Star Trek Next Generation uniform. This one we already saw. Ah, talk about fierce. Here we go. This is a great suit. Very fierce. I love the, um, take a look at that, that jacket collar. It's so awesome. We loved asymmetrical stuff back in the 90s too. That was a whole nother thing we were really into. This one, I'm so on the fence about because you can see it really, really got wet. And see, it, got, it had a lot of damage. But the pattern itself, not so much. See? Patterns in good shape, you know, so, and I hate to throw away patterns. Yeah, I hate the giant Goodwill price tags too. And I noticed the old ones before they had the POS system with the um, theft detection came off easier. The new ones have a second label underneath them that has like a very little bit of metal in it. And it's a theft detection or I guess theft prevention so unfortunately, a lot of these large format ones got very wet. So 
So here's one. Great pattern. Donna Karen. For just a super large shirt. And here's what I'm talking about. Can you see? You can really see the water damage on that. But again, the patterns themselves, not bad at all. And I'll show you. Like, here's the pattern. Pattern's fine. It's got a, I, th I found, I think, one pattern that had a little bit of um, discoloration from the water. But, and I don't think it was gross, gross water. Like, I don't think a septic pipe burst. Um, they would look very different. And, you know, not for nothing, they'd smell different, too. And you can see, I mean, you can see the rippling on the pattern. Obviously, I'll do full disclosure. I'll tell people buying them that, the, you know, the patterns seem to have gotten wet. And it's not all of them, which is the funny thing. Not all of them got wet. Uh, definitely it's just certain patterns and I'm assuming it was something to do with location but like this one this one didn't go wet oh no maybe it did I might be wrong about that Michael Kors yeah see it, it gets a little bit wet I don't remember this Vogue career line but then again I may not have been these to me look like later 90s, which makes me think that by then I had a career and I had no time to sew. I mean, during that time, I did things like made costumes and that's about it. I might have hemmed some pants or something like that, fixed a zipper, but I didn't really sew so. And of course, we have children's patterns. It is very cute. And men's patterns. You know, that men's pattern I showed you guys a couple weeks ago that was for the suit that was a Vogue pattern? There's two of these. Um, I sold that already. I was a little bit surprised, but I sold it already. This is nice. It's Oscar de la Rente. It's kind of a really very pretty. It's just off the shoulder. Very simple. Oh, yes. Carl Lagerfeld. <coughs> just passed away, Mr. Carl. Okay. Who is it? Look. I don't think there's actually anybody there because I don't hear anything. He barks at everything. He barks at every neighbor. This is all just the outerwear, by the way. This is beautiful beautiful dress another one by Belvel Sassoon and Klein it's just a wardrobe pattern Bagley Mishka. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's the pants and the very long jacket piece. Oh, almost done. Another asymmetrical suit by Geoffrey Bean, no less. A lot of designer patterns. works for me. Another Joffrey Bean. Got to fix that. I'm going to iron that out. Oh, this one. You know, I didn't love any of this except for this uh, dress. And wait till you see the line drawings. It's really pretty. It's a really pretty dress. It's another shirt dress kind of thing. It's got a long, it's got the long placket. Got this. And there were three of those, so I'm going to put those aside. This one, I believe, was designed for stretch knits. It certainly looks like it, right? Looks like it would be for stretch knits. Do 
And the very last one is DKNY. This is interesting because it has the, I don't know what you would call it, like leotard, unitard. It basically, one of the shirts actually snaps between your legs so it can't pop out. You know, not my favorite thing, you know. Yes, my dog is just doing his job. I don't know who it was. Could be anybody. There's so many kids running around because it's a pretty nice day. It's hot, but it's a nice day. So there's the kids running around. He likes to bark at them. I don't know why. He likes the kids. I don't, he just has to tell me. But So next week. Boy, I am counting down the days. All right. So I have all of next week, part of the following week, and then we go back to school on I want to say it's the 26th. I can't remember now, but we go back for one full day. Then they give, which is Thursday. Then they give the kids a half day on Friday and then they're off on Monday. I know it doesn't make any sense to all of any of us. Bodysuit. That's what I, that's yeah, man. I have such like old lady brain, right? Um, but the payoff is, is because we're going back early for that day and a half we get an extra day that'll give us a full, like, I think it's 12 days off for the break for spring break, which I'm excited about because they go nuts around spring break. They've, you know, it's been, the winter's been too long. They've been cooped up too much. There's no sun, whatever. They all start to get a little, you know, or, you know, a little aggressive, a little short tempered. So it'll be good. So next week, I am going to try and do, I'm going to do all the Berta. I know I can get through all the Berta. I'm going to throw in the new looks because there was like this many new looks. I think there's like eight new looks. Um, and I'm going to do the, I'm going to start on Butterick. I may be able to get through a lot of the Butterick. I'm going to give it a try. And then the week after that, I'm going to do Simplicity. And then the week after that, I'll start working on the McCalls. And when we get back to school, we'll get back to working on the Mrs. Landis patterns. Um, you know, we're pretty close to the end, really. My goal is to have all of them up by Christmas, and I think I'm actually going to be able to do that. Uh, we have the Stitch and Save. We have the See and Sew. We have Craft Patterns. And that's it. And then we have the patterns that I have to go through that are cut. She just had so many children's patterns. When I've been sorting them, there's just so many children's patterns. And I hate throwing away patterns, but I'm really thinking about it. I have to say some of them are just so banged up. They're in bad shape, but we'll talk, we'll talk about that in the future. So until next week, I hope you guys are all doing great this week. Let me know what you loved, what you hated. I liked pretty much all of it, but I like Vogue. Um, and until next time, I hope wherever you are, it's not too hot. I hope it's not too rainy. It's been very rainy here. And stay well and enjoy the rest of your summer. And I will see you next week. Bye.